Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we'll be discussing the first book in the Zombie Fallout series, Zombie Fallout. It's very easy to remember the name of the series because it's named after the first book. This book is... It was hard for me to, to get into it. I, I tried reading it four separate times. Because for some reason, the first few pages, I just didn't really connect with the characters. I didn't connect with the story. I suppose, I don't know if that was simply because I don't normally read zombie books, or if it just... I just didn't really connect to it. But, you know, I figured I'd spent money on it. I'm going to read it. Or I'm going to give it a shot, at least. So I ended up reading. I said, I'm going to read for an hour, and we'll see how I feel at the end of it. And I am so glad I did that. This book turned out to be just really really good and it goes over the story of Mike Talbot and his family as they start surviving the zombie apocalypse it goes over it covers a few weeks where they meet uh, various friends and uh, they rescue people get a community set up to start survive trying to survive the zombie apocalypse and how Mike prepared for such a thing with his family it's again if you, the first few pages probably are going to be hard for a lot of people to get through, or maybe they'll be easy, I don't know. Maybe it was just hard for me. But if it is hard, tr believe me, just push through that first part, and you'll end up really liking this series. And, or at least this first book. And from what I understand, the series just gets better and better from that point on. Alright, well, that's enough for the non-spoilery section, so from here forward, if you haven't read the book going to be hearing some things that will that might spoil it for when you do finally read it. Zombie Apocalypse, or I'm sorry, Zombie Fallout, <laughs> which is about the zombie apocalypse. This book is most definitely not politically correct. So if you're, if you're thinking you're going to find a politically correct book, or if that's the type of genre or books that you like, do not read this one. <laughs> it is absolutely not politically correct. He makes epilepsy jokes. <laughs> Which I found hilarious. I'm not very PC myself. Uh, just gay jokes, all those type of things. And it's, it's a lot of it because he's a soldier. He's a Marine. And I think Mark Tufo himself was a Marine. Because he definitely has that humor that comes across as soldier's humor. Which <laughs> which is like uh, with Jed, the leader of the community that they're in in Little Turtle. Uh, when Mike gets back there and found out that Jed has secured everywhere and made it safe for them to come home. He, he threatens to give Jed a kiss. <laughs> and, and because Jed was in the army, he understood that humor and he understood what Mike was doing just to help break the tension. But he also calls Mike a fag and a fruitcake. <laughs> so if you're looking for PC, again, this is not a PC book. It's a hilarious book. It's an interesting book. Not a politically correct book. Just let's t tell you that right off the beginning. This, this book is set back during the, uh, the swine flu, the H1N1. Now this story with Mike is that he's a survivalist. He's a marine. He's also a very paranoid germaphobe, so that comes into play quite a few times. But he pushes past it to save his family and his friends. They have a community, as I said, Little Turtle, where they, it has walls up around it. So it's already kind of a, a base, an operation place. But they get a guy named Alex to come in and help, and he's an engineer, they save him, and they reinforce the walls and the gates to help keep the zombies out. The problem is that these are smarter zombies than you find in like the George Romero. They like tell it. They, they start trying to figure out how to use tools and to follow people and to wait till they can lead them to more food. And so they still break in, start killing everybody. And that's, that's just the kind of the thing about zombie apocalypse books. Almost everybody dies in them. But it also has, he taught his boys how to shoot. His wife was against it, and just, just thinking about his wife, I do not like her in this book. And, and the, in, in the beginning of the book, she says something about him just being just some guy that she met while her kids were so important, and I, I can't stand that mentality and that idea. Okay, you choose who you marry. Your kids are just a byproduct. Yeah, love your kids. My parents love me. But if I were to die, my mom and dad would be able to keep going. If my mom or my dad died, whoever was still alive would probably follow them shortly because they chose to be with that person. And that's how you should be. And she 
she just doesn't do that. I mean, he she he tries later in the book to make her seem nice and that she really loves the family, but just that first thing, as they say, the the stressful moments when or when you're most real. And she showed she doesn't to me that she doesn't care about Mike very much in the beginning of the book. And so I just I don't really like her through the rest of the book, even though she everything she does for the family, I just I don't like her. Uh, but that, that's that's how I view it. I don't know if everybody else does, but yeah. Nine. But as they're rescuing their one son from Walmart, they also come across Tommy. Now Tommy, he comes across as mentally handicapped in the book, but he also seems kind of psychic, or maybe not psychic, or just just special. Like he hears a voice in his head who he says is Ryan Seacrest. I recognize that name, but I don't actually know who that is. I never watched American Idol. But he says that Ryan Seacrest tells him to do things and to go places. And so he ends up saving Mike from Durgan, who's shooting at him with a big, heavy uh, minigun. He also lets everybody know when it's safer to go out and do things. He lets Mike know that the community is only going to stand for a week. So I, I don't know if he, like I said, I don't know if he's psychic precisely somewhat, or he's just informed. I, I never really got that about it, but I'm, I'm glad he is. Tommy's, he seems like a, a happy, joyful fellow. And he's definitely magic, because he, he managed to pull Pop-Tarts and candy bars out of everywhere. Even when everybody thought they were gone, he still somehow manages to have Pop-Tarts and candy bars all the time. Which would be just the coolest ability to have. I mean, if there's one ability you gotta have there in, during the zombie apocalypse, pulling food out of the middle of nowhere, thumbs up on that one. Definitely want that one. Okay, then we got Durgan, I mentioned before. He was described as one of the or as the biggest man Mike Talbot had ever seen. And then he meets BT, a big tiny, uh, uh, a black guy at Safeway, who is also the biggest man he has ever seen. Now the thing is, these two, the, you know, when you have two characters that show up that are both described in pretty much the same way, usually one's a friend, one's a foe. Now in this, Durgan turns out to be the bad guy, but BT is never really mentioned again after Safeway. And like, they rescue him, and he kinda, you know, bows up to Mike, but they never really mention him again. So I, I don't know if he's going to come on later in the series. But usually, when there's two people like that mentioned, one of them's a one of them's a good guy, the friend or the the helper or you know important. And I don't know if, like I said, I don't know if it comes in the second book. I hope he does because BT seemed like he might be an interesting character to bring back. But Durgan was definitely the bad guy. I Mike even went to save him after Durgan had attacked and tried to kill him and kill his community. When everything was collapsing, Mike went to save him, and that guy still mouthed off. He was just, he's just a bad guy, a bully, a jerk, a douche, just a bad guy. And Mike made the absolute right choice in leaving him behind. I would have done the same thing. Actually, I probably wouldn't even have gone to help him to save him. I would have just left him. Mike at least was good enough to go and help him. Oh, and then another little interesting tidbit is that uh, in this one, it seems to be only the saliva of the zombies that'll turn you because one of his boys got scratched like actually almost ripped open on his face but since it wasn't was since it was just a hand he didn't turn into a zombie he was sick but he was able to get better and so that's that's something that oh, that a lot of people don't think about that i never thought about with zombies i figured they touch you you're you're dead but in this book it seems like you have to actually be bitten in order to turn zombie a scratch just won't do it if caveat if you get to the antibiotic soon enough uh, so there's another little thought that and that I, I like. He, th he put in that detail of this book. It's another detail I hadn't actually thought of. We also get to meet a, f a woman zombie who seems extra smart, extra scary. <laughs> Matter of fact, she, she gives him the kiss of death, which sounded disgusting. I don't know how Mike, a germaphobe, didn't throw up. I would have thrown up, and I'm not a germaphobe in any way. And just because he, yeah, the black, dead lips, he sees a beetle, ugh. But she didn't, he didn't throw up, and she gave him that kiss of death, and it, it put him into a coma for three days. So it did have some effect on him. And in that coma, he, he even screams out, she is death. And you get a feeling she's going to be showing up later in the series as well. Because the way she acted, the way she moved, like she tricked or cornered one of the guys who ran away from Mike. 
like one of the people who was supposed to be on guard duty who ran away instead of face the uh, face it up just got too scared she cornered that guy ripped his head off and brought it back to mike to say here i did this for you so you got yeah she's definitely gonna be showing up later in the series and she just seems well nasty first off the kiss of that but then also she seems like she's going to be powerful in some way shape or form but in this she just she's just smart and she's gross and scary she's, she comes across as scary like something bad is going to happen with her around we come to the end of the book that that after the zombies have broken through that alex guy who had modified a big rig had escaped but then tommy sent out a, a call a psychic call brought alex back on christmas day which i thought was a nice touch you know it's that gift of christmas day that happiness hooray brings him back rescues mike and everybody and that's where the book ends with mike and his family and his friends and his dog henry who just sounds like a really cool dog that i wish i could have saved and rescued on the big rig driving away from the zombies it it ends on that high note but it's still the zombie apocalypse and mike still has his his feeling that something bad is coming eventually but still a really good book really good series definitely read it uh thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed it i hope you had some new things pointed out to you that maybe you hadn't noticed before in the book uh please say some comment i hope you enjoyed it thank you bye